I have a question for you, the audience. How do you define greatness? How do you define greatness? What is great? You know, the ancient Roman philosopher Seneca said that it is a very, very rough and challenging road that leads to greatness. Oprah Winfrey, she encouraged women to think like a queen because a queen is never afraid to fail. Failure is but a stepping stone to greatness. Benjamin Disraeli, the former British Prime Minister, had something very important to say about greatness. He said that a great person is someone who affects the mind of their generation. Okay, so what is greatness? How about a woman who established 15 schools throughout Appalachia and did it all after the age of 50 years old? A woman who had a burning desire to help others, to provide opportunity for the less fortunate throughout Appalachia. Emily Catherine Pruden was one such woman and certainly a hero by any measure of the word. Now I'm standing here today behind the old Sandy Flats school and church because this property is evocative of the types of schools that Emily founded back in the day throughout North and South Carolina. And by any fair measure, she was truly great. During her rise to greatness, she traveled many rough roads. She demonstrated the courage to fail, and she made a lasting impression on the lives of thousands of poor young Appalachian children. Emily was part of the Protestant missionary movement of the late 19th century. Her zealous commitment to Christian service was a hallmark of the schools she established for both black and white students. Her accomplishments are all the more remarkable in light of the fact that she had been deaf since the age of 17. She began her work in North Carolina in 1884 when she purchased 50 acres in Gaston County. Her first school was Jones Seminary that later became Linwood College. In 1888, she established Lincoln Academy for black females. From this beginning, she went on to found schools at Bloing Rock, Connolly Springs, Saluda, Elk Park, Mill Springs, Cedar Valley, Lawndell, Brevard, Tryon, and Lenore. Oberlin Home and School later became Pfeiffer University. Miss Emily was remarkably resourceful and self-effacing. She unselfishly devoted her money, time, and talents to enhance educational opportunities for Mountain students. A devout Christian, she had an honest, sincere approach to what she considered the Lord's work. She sought to provide the students with a basic education and, as she wrote, trusting in the dear Lord Jesus. Skyland Institute was one of Blowing Rock's most influential early schools. Miss Emily erected classrooms, dormitories, and a chapel. She purchased furniture, books, and school supplies to complete the school. While Skyland was predominantly a boarding school for girls, several boys attended from as far away as Meat Camp. The curriculum consisted mainly of the three R's with a healthy dose of spiritual guidance. It was the practice of Ms. Emily to establish a school, remain there long enough to be assured of its continuance, 
and then deed it to the care of others. In 1890, after three years in Blowing Rock, Pruden deeded Skyland Institute to the American Missionary Movement. Skyland eventually closed in 1912, shortly before Miss Emily's death. You know, Miss Emily will forever be remembered as a champion of the disadvantaged and certainly as one of both North and South Carolina's greatest educators. Thank you.